guys welcome back to the call me other podcast i know it has been a while for me for you all i hope everyone is well and healthy and just prospering y'all can y'all believe it is december december 11th that it's like almost a year is over pretty much so to think what we started out with and then going to march and then just uh the way things have panned out i feel like for all of us it's been nothing short of a whirlwind but still through it all we have to maintain that gratitude i was actually watching something with um maya angel oh let me address the first thing there's no guest today <laughs> yeah. um having guests has definitely been a struggle just finding stuff that makes sense for my podcast so yeah no guests today all me freestyle no i wrote down some things but Um, going back to Maya Angelou, she was talking about gratitude and how in every season you have to really be grateful. And I feel like a lot of us have been struggling with that, especially myself. And she was just saying, even when like you lose opportunities or something, you get fired for something, be grateful because something better is on the way or just having that gratitude in your heart really makes a difference. So I know if you're like me, you'd be like, um, what would we grateful for today? Because everything I want, I'm not getting, but it doesn't mean it's not, you never know what's up the road. You never know when it's coming so just stay positive stay uplifted and be grateful for your health for your family for your friends just keep that gratitude in your heart it just makes everything easier because I was um watching um the breakfast club and they had um on their Lyrica who's a little girl she's 13 years old and she's fighting for her life with brain cancer and everything that her parents and her siblings are having to go to those sacrifices that are having to be made on her behalf so it's not to say her life is so bad because she's surrounded with love and everything and God's going to make a way for her but it just shows us that sometimes we paint our situation as so bad and so dire when we never know what's coming up the road so just trust and know that things could always be worse and even the little bit that you do have stretch it thin and know that it's some it's worth having and everything that you go through is for a reason okay so that's a little bit of my tangent for today um as far as it goes with just having that openness and i've been having to remind myself a lot y'all because these times are very very hard for um all of us but especially myself so yes so today i wanted to get into a little bit of a black media okay so i was watching the breakfast club if y'all don't know breakfast club is comprised of angela Yee, dj envy charlamagne the god and um basically what they were talking about um they had this week i believe angela Yee is out so they've been having their own little guests own little thing going so it's been charlamagne the god and dj envy which is always interesting um so this week they had the 85 south show and i love the 85 south show that's comprised of dc young fly is comprised of chico bean and it's comprised of carlos miller these three young black men who are so talented so funny and so raw y'all gotta check it out but anyway this week they were speaking about the need to have positive black um influences within media and that got me thinking because I think we've all been watching the situation unfold with Casanova. Casanova is a rapper from New York and he has recently got um been arrested on Rico charges and a lot of people said DJ Vlad had something to do with that because DJ Vlad um he basically to me um is he's a black he's a um a hip hop journalist and um he's um like Pete wrote Rosenberg, I think his name is, Vlad, um, I think DJ Smiles or whatever these um, these guys with these camera and this camera equipment, they go around, they interview these black artists and ask them all kind of questions um, about their life and just like questions that kind of paint negative light. Like it's not nothing uplifting about them. It's like about their time in jail and like about their rough upbringing and about things that are honestly criminal, if you ask me. You know, um, sometimes, you know, I know they've had, I know DJ Vlad has had chili on and different things like that, but it's just, to me, just, uh, when you hear things like that, it's just important, the culture, 
uh, how important we are to each other and just remind me how important the breakfast club and all of those things are and hearing the 85 south show talk about that the need for positive black media exo nicole is a great example she started off as nicole bitchy and now she's exo nicole but i think the need for positive black media is dire because you see so many things being painted in negative lights and you see situations like with dj vlad and casanova and um, it just makes you think like who's guarding our culture. I'm sorry y'all that's the grandfather clock and it is roaring, okay? Oh, it's ten o'clock. Oh shit. Anyway <laughs> but yeah, so they kind of um speak so they kind of um, act as safeguards kind of for the community and are able to just paint hip-hop in such a negative way so that's why when DC Young Fly was speaking to the need for positive black influence this is so important because you think of things like Baller Alert and the Shade Room that have just become uh, the battleground for negativity within the community and just the way things are painted and it's just like well how do we go about telling the story because there is celebrity gossip but what makes it so nasty so negative and just so like ugh. like um I remember um the breakfast club saying like how Megan Thee Stallion's um PR team put all these stipulations on their interview but yet they she can go to all these white media outlets and that's what I mean by black media being important and um just it acting as a safeguard for our community because I feel like no one understands us more than us. So when I hear DC Young Fly and all these artists talk about that, I feel like that helps with the perception. I feel like so many perceptions are, can be painted as negative when you come in and you have these Jewish white men who really don't understand anything about black culture and are able to come in and kind of like be like, ooh, I see this, ooh, I see that. And that's why it's important for black me media to kind of really prosper. Because when you look at even, um, you know, um, just different, um, the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, all of these things, or if you're like me, you grew up with Tom Jordan in the morning, and you see the necessity of black media, the fun that it can be, and everything, and it kind of wakes, up, wakes us up. But it's just like these cultural boundaries are super important to us because they help kind of make things easier for black celebrities and just the way we navigate and the way things are painted. So I just want to say that black media is important and hearing DC Young Fly kind of speak to that, you know, and seeing Charlemagne kind of work with all these different podcast artists and kind of speaking to that is super important because I feel like so many um, black celebrities and so many people complain about like, oh, the media is painting me as this, the media is painting me as that. Well, the reality of the situation is they can only get take from what they give you um which is very sad because I feel like people have deeper stories and I know I've watched several interviews several times and I'm just like wow it could be so much deeper because I know the story of the artist and I was just like that's where we come in at as a people just kind of with um with being able to have those safeguards of that safe space for black um for black artists and also for black media but um I think it was interesting also they talked about how like black media only is around on an average of two to three years and I was just like wow I was like that's that's crazy to think about because it's just so easy to fail because no one really supports that and you know when you think of artists like Megan Thee Stallion or Mulatto or um all these different type of art these artists that are really popping right now Lil Baby, The Baby, um Your Mama's Baby, they are <laughs> These artists are going to those GQs. They want to go to People Magazine. They're going to these. Or even like Cassie, I seen she made her baby pregnancy announcement with People Magazine. So I think there is a conversation that needs to be had, you know, versus um, like going to Essence. You know, Essence is totally online now. And I think it's just important that artists as well as people rethink and understand the importance of cult the cultural ties of the black media and that we do keep essence ebony all those things kind of around because people get so mad about when narratives get painted but then you quick to write off black media like black people can work together it can be successful and it could all work out and i think it's just important to add diversity to media you know um you see the Hispanic community, they have their networks. I feel like every community kind of needs to be able to speak to each other in a safe area. I feel like there is a, a certain language that we are able to speak to each other. Or even like women journalists, like it's a certain way that female journalists or 
um, can speak to female audiences to get to understand. I think that was proven with the Me Too movement because I think many men kind of joked around with it. But if you're a woman that's dealt with sexual assault, I feel like there were certain artists, um, certain journalists and certain people in the media that were able to speak to you and really get you cold, hard facts and get you to understand. So I think it's super important to recognize the need for black media, the need for it to be positive and not draped in things. Like I said, no, no Tino shades, the shade room, but just to not have it dripped in negativity, but to have something like 85 South show where they can talk about subjects and have fun. The breakfast club as controversial as it is, is definitely matured over the years. So you need these things around because they are able to represent the culture in many ways that if it was up to other outlets, it would not be represented. So I just want to shout out the, Great thing Charlemagne the God is doing and um, seeing DC Young Fly kind of speak on the importance of black media, y'all. So that's that on that. I just kind of, y'all know I kind of freestyle that. <laughs> I just wanted to speak on it because as a, um, as a journalist, you know, I see the importance of all communities being represented. And sometimes people tell you like, oh, don't be biased, don't be biased. But I think if you have an experience with someone or you are able to share the same background, it does kind of lend to make things better. Like you saw Gail King and R. Kelly interview. Like it just makes the dynamics to me just a little bit more interesting and comes from a place of understanding that not all the producers sometimes get. You know what I mean? All right, y'all. So, <laughs> you know what else we are up to? We are in the final days of the Trump presidency. It has been a journey, okay? Covering the complete, um, just the complete everything about this presidency. So, just covering that, it's just hard to believe that we are in the final days. Now, um, something that comes, that generally doesn't come in the middle of transition is execution. So there's actually five scheduled executions that were supposed to take place between now and um, January 20th. That's very rare. Um, it's been over 100 years since they've had um, federal, federal, again, federal executions during a presidency um, transfer kind of situation. So um, it's, a lot of people have been talking about it. You know, Kim Kardashian has been on the front lines of that. Um, you know, she speaks a lot about the death penalty. She does her own thing with prison reform and all kind of things. So one of the five people that are set to be executed was executed on December 10th at 930. So they were executed last night. And the man who I'm talking about is Brandon Bernard. Um, now, Brandon Bernard for um, you all who don't know, um, he's 40 years old, but he committed his crime in 1999 when he was 18, so he was very young. He and a group of, um, this it's happened in June of 1999, he and a group of four other boys um, decided to, you know, get into some mischievous things, some very dangerous things that turned ultimately deadly. So they, I guess, did something on the fly, just being young and dumb, um, and they decided to... Um, like hitch a ride and then whoever the, I guess gave them the ride they were going to rob so um, that's what happened you know a young couple um, the the couple's name are the Bagley's Todd and Stacy they were a young couple a young group of ministers that were traveling and they saw these young boys needed a ride so they stopped being good the good people that they are and it turned into a stick-up situation so the young men actually robbed the couple and even took it a step further by throwing them in the trunk and they kind of took off in the car. So um, this this was a very, very sad story. Ultimately, um, ultimately what ended up happening was that um, a, one of the young men, um, let me get his name, and his last name was Vi Violi. Yeah, Violi, one of the young men, he um, ended up shooting the couple and um, killed the woman on site, and then, uh, no, killed the man. The man was killed instantly, while the woman, they said she might have been still alive, but he basically shot to kill them. No, he shot them to death, basically, is what's being reported. And then that's when, um, unfortunately, Brandon Bernard made the terrible decision to put lighter fluid around the car and light the car on fire, and they basically were burned to death also. <clears throat> So the case was extremely sad because Brandon Bernard was the only one that got the death penalty. 
Um, a lot of people protested that his lawyers worked hard to try to get him off death row because many people felt it was unfair because it was a group a group of them and the people that actually killed the couple, the young man that actually killed the couple, he didn't even get, um, he got, you know, sentenced, but he didn't get the death penalty like Brandon did. And I guess the conversation was, did Brandon even kill them at all? Or, you know, he was accessory to the crime, but did he, was he responsible for their death? Why is he being sentenced to death? So that's the conversation around that, um, and it's just so heartbreaking because I feel like the conversation with the death penalty will just never, ever, ever go away. Um, his um, lawyers, of course, tried to file for um, the Supreme Court to get them to overturn the decision for the death penalty. But they, the Supreme Court ultimately denied that request. Um, Kim Kardashian, you know, she was just talk, uh, talking about it, talking about it. You know, she was hurt about the decision. But um, it's just sad because I feel like um, this uh, case also took place in Colleen, Texas. I gives it. Um, I just wanted to be as cautious as possible with telling stories like this. But I think it's it's mainly sad because it um it's sad because. It's a life for a life, and that never really solves an issue. Um, his lawyers never tried to get him off or try to get him out of jail. They always felt like he should have been um, sentenced. Um, they wanted him sentenced to um, life in prison without parole. But, you know, Brandon was someone who, would, who rehabilitated himself, who was nice and never got in trouble in jail. And I feel like where do, how, what is the jail system? You know, what is the prison system? I think, is it, what is it designed to do? Is it a rehabilitation place or not? Um, do people get second chances or not? Are there unforgivable acts or is everything forgivable? You know, the conversation of morality within the justice system is just a never ending conversation. And I feel like that's the case with Brandon Bernard, you know, it's just like, you see these situations and it's just heartbreaking because it's just like, wow, this young, this man was 40 years old. He never got to spend, enjoy any of his adult life because he spent it behind bars. And it's just like the family, though, the Bagley's family, they didn't deserve that either. And, you know, the prosecutor for that case has came forward, which is something that's added a dynamic. The former prosecutor for that case who got him the death penalty and the jurors who sit, who um, gave the guilt, guilt, guilty verdict um, have all come forward and said they wish they would have done that. They wish they would have known more about the case. They wish they would have seen things differently. They wish they would have been able to process it differently. And they do not think he deserved to die. And... That's the crazy part about the justice system that, okay, now, now what, you know, where do we go from here? And I think that's the sad and heartbreaking truth about stories like Brandon Bernard and different people like that, because it's just like, where do you go from here? Do can, what would have been a proper sentence for him, you know? And that's what I think so many people have a problem with within prison reform and all of that. Cause it's just like, you see things like this happen or even like the young black man that was killed by officers in Ohio this week. Like, it's just like, okay, those officers are on administrative leave and they're murderers and guess what? Nothing's going to happen to them. So I think it's a question of morality within the justice system and what's right and what's wrong. And ultimately all of it's wrong. You know, nothing, none of this behavior is okay. But at what point can we forgive people and what chance do people get to move on to their life? Because let's say hypothetically, Brandon would have been sentenced till he was like 70. He would have done 50 years behind bars. What quality of life would he have had? He has no skills. He has nothing really. And now he's an old elderly man. He's never been able to create a life outside of those walls. So it's kind of just a, 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 just a point like, well, was that a person that could have lived on to tell a story? How do we look at murderers, you know? Is he someone who you would have want worked on your job? Like, it's just so many questions, a full landscape, landscape of that. But I guess for me, the question is always with the justice system is, what is justice? And is what is 
what can we say is okay and not okay by the law? And I think that's where so many people um, hate situations like this because Brandon was the only one that was executed, you know? And it's so sad and it's so heartbreaking because so many people rallied behind it because although what all of the young men was, did was terrible, how could you just hold one man to the fire without the others? And, you know, even at the end, he said he was sorry to his family, to the Bagley's family. And, you know, the Bagley's, um, the, um, the man's, the man that was killed, Todd's mother said, you know, she's, she's forgave him, but she feels better now that he's dead. And it's just crazy to think about. And it's just like, it makes you question justice and, you know, situations like that. But I kind of wanted to break down the Brandon Bernard situation because the whole conversation online. And I think many people want to uh, want different things to happen and feel like his life should not have been taken. Because what if he was making a difference behind those prison walls? You know, um, I saw he started this crochet club and they would give away things to people in need. So he was a good, he seemed like he had turned his life around. But Many of us will never get a chance to see that in fruition. No one really got a chance to see that in fruition because of the way the justice system is, I guess, flawed. And it does have a conversation about well, accountability, you know. So with the Brandon Bernard situation, those type of things are always heartbreaking. And again, the importance of having cultural media to be able to explain things. So uh, explain things. So, you know, that's very, very tough to just think about. But... I just wanted to kind of put it out there. That's what's in the media outlets today. You know, it's very sad. Four more executions are set to take place um, between now and January 20th. Very uncommon with presidency, with um, when there's a transfer to power, but a lot of things are uncommon. Um, and, you know, we're just going to keep rolling, y'all, because it's just, it's a crazy world out there. And that's why it's so important that we are able to be with our youth and add support for them because you can make decisions at 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, and then you're going to be paying the price for that for 40, 50 years, especially if you are a person of color. You know, it's so unfair, but it's the reality of situations that happen every day. So I want to talk a little bit about Brandon Menard, y'all, and just kind of tell you all a little bit what's going on in the media outlets. We are going to have an uplifting episode next week, I promise y'all, but I definitely wanted to give y'all a little something, a little something um, to think about uh, within media, within um, the presidency that comes to an end and all the different things, coronavirus related. Y'all stay safe. Y'all stay out the way. So um, y'all be blessed. Y'all be blessed. And I will be blessed. All right, guys, that is this week's episode. Thank you all so much for tuning in this week. Be sure to tune in every week to check out all of our new episodes. We are available on all platforms, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean. And I want to give a special shout out to J Visuals for the graphics. So be sure to stay tuned for more exciting things to come. Have a good week. Be blessed and in abundance.